Paul McKeer from Parenting Research Centre, uh, head office in, in Melbourne. Welcome, and again, good morning to all those attending this Healthy Start webinar. It's great to have you on the line, whether it's uh, you're using your telephone uh, uh, earphones or you're using sound through your computer, and to have you um, connected with our webinar online to view the actual visuals. For those of you who uh, may have your first time with Healthy Start webinars, uh, I'll just do a quick introduction around Healthy Start and then what these webinars are about. Um, Healthy Start being a national initiative around supporting parents uh, who have a learning difficulty or intellectual disability and their families, that initiative uh, has been running for a number of years with federal uh, funding and it contains a number of different strategies to support families. One of them, of course, is to work closely with services. Uh, another is to work with researchers and uh, to develop and disseminate the latest evidence supporting these families. And of course, another uh, general strategy is to work with policymakers and government to, to hopefully influence over time the service system more generally around supporting families in this space. Um, Healthy Start's activities to, under those strategies uh, break into a, a number of different things. One of those activities is the idea of running webinars like this. So these webinars, and we've had a number of them over, over the last couple of years, we find are quite successful in getting some good sharing to happen, some good knowledge exchange to happen. Uh, we like to vary the webinars between perhaps sharing knowledge from a research perspective or sometimes sharing knowledge from a practice perspective and also sharing knowledge from the perspective of families themselves and having parents share their stories and experiences uh, when it comes to uh, how they've interacted with and experienced support. So that's uh, the kind of content we generally like to plug into these webinars. They run for uh, approximately 30 minutes, uh, give or take, and then we'll have a short amount of time at the end for some questions and answers, which you can essentially log while you're online, uh, folks, by just going through the questions part of the interface, uh, which is on the right-hand side in that main sort of tool area. You can ask questions there at any time, and our team here will pick them up, and we'll have them noted for, for the end of the presentation. Otherwise, um, I'll just move on to introduce who we have today on this webinar. And this webinar uh, is focusing on that experience from the field type approach. Uh, we have a webinar entitled Totally Awesome Parents Group, a play group for parents with intellectual disability or learning difficulties. So this is sort of a case study a webinar, a, a sort of a story from the field, if you will. And we have two presenters here today uh, who will share the air waves and talk about what they have experienced in setting up this play group, this supported play group. We have Mandy Lyons and Georgina Devereaux. I'll do a quick introduction for both and then we can switch over to the guys and they can start with their short presentation. Mandy Lyons has a background in early childhood and, and early parenting and holds qualifications in mothercraft nursing and holds a postgraduate in education. Mandy's worked in a variety of settings with parents and children and during the past 13 years Mandy's worked with families who have been experiencing additional challenges in their parenting role. So it's a perfect fit for the Families Healthy Start aims to support. Over the past seven years, Mandy's worked in local government and enhanced maternal child and health service and then home visiting capacity and parent education programs. And over this time, Mandy's, um, and especially with the work with Enhanced MCH, she's you know, recognized the gap in community services for parents who have learning difficulties. And Mandy teamed up with Georgina Devereaux to develop and seek funding for a program to support parents in this space. Georgina has been working in various family support, early childhood settings for over 20 years. And she's worked with supported playgroups and vulnerable families for at least five years in her role as playgroup support and development officer. Georgina is very enthusiastic about supporting parents with learning difficulties and doing that in the local community setting. And she's used her experience in playgroup development to co-develop the Totally Awesome Parents Playgroup. So as a duo, Mandy and Georgina will now talk us through what 
what uh, essentially happened in their local community setting and what uh, the learnings have been from that. Uh, and now, can you hear me, uh, both of you, Mandy and Georgina? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, so we'll now uh, transfer control of what people are viewing to you, and we'll be able to kick off on the presentation part of the webinar. So what you should see is the box asking, do you want to show your screen? Here we go. Okay, thank you for that introduction, Derek. And Georgina and I are very excited and um, pleased to be presenting this um, bit of a, a chat today about the Totally Awesome Parents Playgroup because we feel quite passionate and about the program and um, so it's a great opportunity to be able to share our experiences with the audience. Uh, first of all, thought, and what we're going to do during the presentation, we're just going to um, take turns of talking. So um, I'm just going to, oh, this is Mandy, I'm just going to start off now. And just to, oh, we're just having some technical difficulties okay. as we start. Just trying to move to the next slide. It's not. Okay, maybe click into the, into the presentation. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right. Okay. So, just a bit of an overview um, about parents who have an intellectual disability. They're usually um, categorised as having IQ less than seventy, and um, the Families that we have coming along to our playgroup are usually in the mild range of intellectual disability. Uh, they might have also been um, uh, classified by their, one of their support workers as having a learning difficulty. So sometimes we have families attending who are in the mild um, IQ range and other times uh, they've identified as having some sort of learning difficulty such as um, dyslexia or they might have had a long term difficulties with their school learning. Sometimes they've had a, an aid at school, sometimes they've gone to a special development school, sometimes they've gone to a mainstream school, they come from a variety but they've all identified they do have some sort of learning difficulty. Okay. Um, and just on the screen you'll see a list of experiences um, for living conditions, unemployment, victims of violence or bullying, abuse, poor health, limited family support, etc. Um, these circumstances aren't experienced by all of our families. Um, many of our families um, with learning difficulties have grown up in happy and supportive homes with stable families. Um, but generally, on the whole, we know that people with um, intellectual disabilities or learning difficulties um, generally have poor living conditions. Uh, parents might be unemployed and rely on Centrelink payments, um, or they may be employed, however poorly paid. Um, single mothers, women, are often preyed upon by domineering men who may not have their best interest in mind. Um, at this point there's no actual Australian figures so we don't know how many families have parents with an intellectual disability within Australia. Uh, research is currently being conducted and I believe Healthy Start is conducting some prevalence research. Um, there'll be three reports in total and two are currently available on the Healthy Start website. So they're getting a clearer number of um, families that are headed by parents with learning difficulties um, and they're getting this information from different health professionals. Well, I thought I'd talk about uh, a little bit about how the playgroup uh, began. Uh, with my work through the Enhanced Maternal Child Health 
program of finding there was a lot of families coming through the program that had either an intellectual disability or significant learning difficulties. And um, as we know, it's difficult enough when you're a, a first-time parent or even a second-time parent um, in, in your parenting role, but parents who have learning difficulties have additional challenges that um, other parents may not face. And they require some really long-term ongoing support um, with their parenting. There didn't seem to be many suitable programs around or programs that offered ongoing support. There's lots of short-term programs, but there wasn't anything that really suited the needs um, for the families. These families suffer quite um, they're quite socially isolated, have low self-esteem, and um, are not likely to join regular play groups, etc. And, and need a bit of support to go out in the community, feel confident to to join groups. And um, in my role in parent education groups, I was once um, running a new parents group with about. Um, you know, six or seven families, and we had one of the participants was a mum with an intellectual disability, and she was great. She came along every week with her little child, and um, really wanted to be a member of that new parents group and and just be a regular mum. And uh, usually at the end of the the groups on week six, we um, get the parents to exchange phone numbers and addresses. And then they normally continue to meet in each other's homes or they'll meet in a cafe or at a park or somewhere and then keep that social connection. Well, this mum who had the intellectual disability was very excited at the end of the group and she said, I want to have a group at my place next week. You know, can you all come to my place? And it was really a really sad moment because you could have heard a pin drop because no one responded to this mum. They wouldn't give her eye contact and they just did not respond to her. And this is really sad for this mum because she just wanted to be a regular mum and um, be part of a mum's group. And um, the other mums really outed her and didn't want to um, participate. So that was really sad. And I was seeing a fair bit of this where these mums were really excluded from a lot of groups in the community. So it was really building a case for why we should um, have some sort of ongoing support and help link these mums in, into um, mainstream groups as well where they could feel um, connected and um, valued and welcomed as well. Okay, um, I've got some research there in regards to the benefits of a supported play group and I suppose I should explain a supported play group is um, where you have a facilitator or facilitators actually running the play group supporting the families. Um, so we've got some information up there, I won't read it out but the research tells us the parents who are supported with their parenting experience have greater long term success in parenting. We know that this um, support should be long term with the families that they're working with. It should also, um, or that we're working with, it should also be ongoing and the information that we give um, should be suited to their learning style. Um, and recent research, the research down the bottom there, um, you can probably see that it shows that playgroup attendance can have a positive effect on any child's learning and social outcomes. So playgroups are a good thing for all children. So our vision for the playgroup was to provide parents with intellectual disabilities and learning difficulties and their children an opportunity to socialise with peers in a supported setting to gain parenting information in an informal manner as suited to their learning style and as a soft entry point for parents to engage with other community and support services for both adult and child. And of course to have fun and they certainly do have a lot of fun in our play group. It's lovely to see these parents feeling welcomed and making friends and having fun. Mm -hmm. Ok, 
Okay, so the development of our play group, um, we knew that this was something that we wanted to do and an opportunity became available to us to apply for some funding in early 2012 and that um, our submission was successful and the funding was made available through Communities for Children in Frankston. Um, after you know, setting everything up, doing a lot of the, the groundwork and interviews and whatnot, our playgroup was established in October 2012 and we named it the Frankston Totally Awesome Parents Playgroup. And we need to acknowledge um, Angela Alexander. Uh, she developed a parent group in Warrnambool with the same name and we loved the name and asked Angela if we could use it um, and she said yes. So thanks to Angela. So um, a little bit about the way how our playgroup runs. We have two qualified facilitators and we're very fortunate to have our facilitators from um, different backgrounds. We have a speech pathologist and we also have an early uh, intervention, uh, early education specialist as well. So um, qualified staff from two different Different disciplines is really um, important, I think. And then, um, facilitators are really used to working in other programs as well with uh, children with additional needs, as well as working with families with quite complex issues. Uh, the playgroup meets weekly for two hours. We have a range of activities for age and stage of the children attending. The parents also have a big input into the playgroup where they get to select what topics they'd like to talk about or activities that their children like doing. So we really draw a lot on um, the, the parents to help us with the planning of the playgroup as well. We provide a healthy morning tea each week which is a great opportunity for some um, lots of social learning and um, education as well. I think Georgine is going to talk a little bit more about the, the morning tea time um, soon. Um, and it's been really great that the parents have um, participated in the topics and some issues came up with, for example, uh, um, safety with the internet and discussions about that and and keeping their children safe. So we actually had uh, the community police squad come in one session to talk about safety, how to keep your children safe, um, who, who you can trust in the community and who you can't trust. And this can be quite an issue with some um, uh, people with uh, learning dif difficulties. It's difficult to learn about um, boundaries and safety issues. So this was a really valuable session for the families. Um, another topic they identified that they wanted to know more about was um, child teething and you know questions like when is my child going to um, get teeth and also there were some concerns with parental um, dental concerns as well. So we got a dental nurse in to have a, a, a chat at one of the sessions and that was really well received and, and she brought in some little giveaway toothbrushes and toothpaste and that was great because it um, helped the parents to follow up on um, children's dental hygiene, you know, brushing their teeth, etc. Uh, we've had, um, during the play group, we've, the parents have brought up lots of other topics too about um, quite serious topics sometimes. We've had parents share the stories about um, having postnatal depression. We've had another um, discussion about bullying. A lot of them, the parents talked about how they were bullied at school and it was quite interesting to hear them share their stories and just for each other to hear about experiences that they've experienced but other people have gone through that as well. So it gives them a bit of a, a sense of they're not the only one that people, there's other people shared their experiences. Um, and can I just sort of add, they're really insightful 
in their responses, um, in particular the bullying and um, the different types of education that they received. There was one dad who'd been to look that many schools, and so it was very his education was very disjointed, and and he actually recognised that it was important for his daughter. It was important for him that his daughter went to the same school from prep to grade six and without any interruptions or this constant moving. And it was just great to hear him, you know, have have that thought and, and it was great that he expressed those comments too. Right, so on to morning tea. Um, and I don't know one person who doesn't like to eat. We're all very good eaters here at the playgroup. Um, and it's also a great opportunity for learning, role modelling and participating in, in um, food and food preparation. Um, when the families arrive, when their, ch their children were quite small, and we, we talked about the introduction of first foods, and we noticed that a lot of our families were bringing in those squeezy bags of mashed up fruit or vegetables or whatnot, and they're actually quite expensive, those packets. Um, so the facilitators of the playgroup demonstrated how easy it was to actually um, prepare basic first foods for babies. So the parents cut up the pumpkin, they steamed it, they mashed it, showed them how to store it. And we did that over a number of um, sessions. And it was always being presented at, at morning tea time. Um, and as the children got older, we developed them through to finger foods, uh, and then moving them on to family food. We try to introduce a new food um, each week. So uh, sliced cucumber, steamed veggies, dip and veggie sticks, that sort of thing. Um, and we have got one mum in the group who's quite a keen cook and she really seems to enjoy um, preparing morning tea and taking part in that uh, routine. Um, it's also a really good opportunity to notice if a child has any food issues, such as the ability to, to chew. Um, so the facilitators will take this opportunity to, to role model, discuss uh, with parents how they can follow through with this at home, uh, different strategies that they can use. Um, we had a little chap who was continuously stuffing food into his mouth. Um, the strategies were, were given to these this family and uh, we felt it was necessary to make a referral um, and so that's gone ahead and everything's running along nicely. Um, it's also a great opportunity to talk about safety with food so you know we sit down when we're eating, strapping children into high chairs, um, hygiene and hand washing, setting the table, wiping the table down that sort of thing but we, we do it in a fun way, it's, you know it's part of the routine and the, the family is sort of got the knack of what the routine is and yeah it's great to hear that they're following through with this at home. Um, you can probably see photos of our veggie garden um, which has been ter a terrific opportunity for the families to, to participate in. They've done all that planting and looking after the garden and we've also um, been fortunate enough to be able to use some of the vegetables in our cooking, you can probably see an omelette up there, which was presented at morning tea time. Um, and it was lovely to hear that one of the families actually recreated an omelette uh, at home to enjoy for dinner that night. They also have the opportunity to um, take some of the vegetables home um, and yeah, to be able to cook them at home. Um, and we've actually inspired one parent to create his own veggie patch. He actually, or this family, lives in a unit. Um, however, they've utilised the space to be able to have their own little plot and use tubs and whatnot to create their own vegetable garden, which is fantastic. So um, here they are having morning tea, and this has been. Um, taken a while ago when some of the babies were um, younger and I think here they're progressing through the next stage which they're being offered some finger foods and um, we, morning tea is a really good time for um, a bit of information or sharing some 
education on topics that come up and, and on this occasion um, one of the parents is wanting to know what else they could give their child and to eat uh, seeing they were going to the next stage of their food development. So we got, had some little booklets out and um, some little recipes, little basic recipes and photos of different um, foods. So we took that moment to discuss um, what other foods and how to make the foods. And so the morning tea time is a really great opportunity for role modelling and giving information and also um, for socialising as well, lots of really great conversations happen at morning tea time. Mm. Um, and here's a slide with some photos of different activities that presented at the group. Um, we really focus on um, parent-child interactions, eye contact, talking to your child, that sort of thing. We also introduce um, books into every session regardless of the age. Um, I, I just need to make a point, some of these families have low literacy and we don't focus on sit down with your child and read them a story. We talk about sharing the book, pointing to pictures, naming what's in the, in the pictures on the, the book um, and this works really well. Um, so you can see that there's a, a bit of story time going on and rest assured that child is not eating another baby, it is a doll. Um, one session we decided to have um, a self-care session and pamper session and during the session we had some brainstorming and we don't usually bring out the whiteboard. I know this looks very much like the, the school room but this is the one off but we decided just to throw around some ideas on ways we could um, look after ourselves when we were feeling a bit stressed or you know, we needed to take some time out. And um, so these are the, the ideas that the families came up with. And afterwards, um, we um, typed out their suggestions and with pictures, using little pictures as well, and printed it out and gave that to the families so they could take that home and have that as a um, just a reminder of things that they could do to uh, take time out for themselves and de-stress. Um, and through this session we also um, we had uh, pamper packs which we gave to families. We had little things like you know, shampoo and soap and nice, nice little goodies that we gave out and we also brought in some foot spas and um, yeah it was a really lovely session for them. And um, after this had happened, we, we had one of the families who um, had fairly low self-esteem and, and this mum um, decided that she'd actually didn't like photos of herself and uh, wasn't feeling great about herself. She actually decided to join one of the local gyms. We've got a really great little gym in a shopping centre which is quite low cost and she decided to join the gym and um, she's been attending regularly. She's actually lost a lot of weight. She's thinking about eating healthier foods and she's really feeling really great about herself now. And in fact, I'll just tell a little story about this mum. We take lots of photos during um, the play group and earlier on this mum didn't want to be in any of the photos because she really hated herself in photos. But yesterday um, at the play group we had the camera out and she actually came up to me and said can you take a photo of me and my child together. And that was a really big moment because she's got to the stage now she's really feeling great about her, herself and she's got a lot of those ideas that she's following through um, that we talked about at our pamper session which is great. Mm. And here we've got some more photos again of, of things that are happening at playgroup. You can see a dad there with his child. Um, we try to set up activities that can be replicated at home. So that little photo down in the bottom right hand corner, um, playing peekaboo. That mum's playing peekaboo with her little girl. This is something that can be done at home. 
um, and something easy for the, the families to be able to, to copy at home. I mean, you know, we all know toys can be quite costly um, and a lot of these families don't have much so we try to make things a bit easier by providing them activities that they can replicate at home. Part of the play group is that we um, do take lots of photos of the, the families each week and we use these photos, um, we, we actually give families copies of all the photos we take but we also use the photos in a newsletter that we um, print out and give just to the families that do attend the play group and um, they love to get the newsletter because not only um, well, mainly because it's photos of, of themselves and the, with their children as well. But in the news that we um, also perhaps talk about what we've been doing, any particular activity that we've been doing. Uh, we might have a little recipe that we've used in the play group. Um, one of the play group participants has actually taken part in the newsletter now where um, she has her top five questions. So she takes a turn in asking someone in the playgroup things like, you know, what's your favourite movie? Um, where would you like to go on holiday? Questions like that. So it's a bit of fun, but she's um, really taken that on board and, and really uh, participating in that uh, newsletter. Um, what other things do we put in our newsletter? Um, well, maybe some little safety tips about uh, now that the children are, are toddlers and really mobile. Um, we talk about road safety. Uh, a lot of our families walk to playgroups, so just yeah, tips on road safety and keeping everyone safe whilst walking to playgroups. Mm. And we also, if there's a family that's missed out on a couple of sessions of playgroup, we'll post them the newsletter so they're kept linked in with the playgroup so they still feel included and know what's happening. Um, the play group, of course, uh, is an opportunity for families to create friendships within the group and it's been beautiful to see the friendships blossom within the group and um, the families are meeting now outside of the play group and they'll text each other or they'll get on Facebook and chat on Facebook or they'll meet um, Sometimes after the play group, they'll all leave together and, and walk over to the shopping centre and have some lunch or they've met in the park and um, they've, they've done lots of activities outside of um, the play group, which is fantastic um, that they've found these new friends. Um, during the play group too, it's an opportunity to link families into other community agencies. Uh, for example, we have quite a strong link with maternal child health so if there's any concerns that the parents identify with their children we can um, talk with their, their maternal child health nurse or, or help link them um, in with their health nurse or perhaps there's other supports that they need in the community or a referral so we can easily refer them on to other agencies and this really um, is a great way of, of keeping the family supported when they need that support. Um, yes, and, and sometimes, you know, we, we they come up with questions that we can't answer, but we certainly are able to source that information and get back to them about how to link into particular services in the community. Um, and here's some examples of our outings that we've arranged, um, picnics at local parks, uh, and whatnot. Um, we try to ensure that all the um, outings are no cost and within the local area. Um, and as Mandy mentioned, they have made some really great friendships with one another um, and do meet regularly outside of playgroups. So if someone's having a birthday party, they'll, you know, they'll invite the other families. Um, they meet at cafes. We've overheard a couple of dads um, organising a barbecue. Um, to take place on a weekend. Um, a couple of the dads have organised to meet up at football matches, which is fun. Um, I will sometimes see them on the weekend at our local library. Uh, 
they'll head off to the beach. So yeah, it's, it's great to see that they're picking up on um, the outings. Our referrals for the program come through local community support agencies. So uh, we try to get the information out there that and promote the play group um, that is available. And um, so we prefer the referrals through an agency because they can properly um, explain to the family what the play group is about. Um, it's, it's if you just put an ad uh, in the community, sometimes it's difficult. The, the most difficult part we've had about promoting the group is um, sometimes, and this comes from professionals too, they, they look at um, the blurb about the group, but they mistake it for a group for parents who have a, a child with a disability. And um, so it, it's really good to be able to speak with the person who's referring to the group to, to make sure that's um, clear and to give them a good um, you know, overview of what the group is about. And this is just the front cover of our flyer. Um, as you can see on the front, it says for parents who have experienced learning difficulties. So we're quite upfront and honest about who the group is for and what it's about. There's been some unexpected outcomes from the group. It has some fantastic outcomes, and particularly um, for the dads' participation, we've had quite a few dads attend the play group, and I suppose that's probably because. Um, the difficulties some of the dads have with employment and so they are available and at home and able to come to the group. But it's been really lovely to have them come along to the group and there's been some really great friendships that have occurred between um, the, the dads in, in the group and they've also gone on to meet outside of the group um, in the community for some activities for example, there's a couple of dads who um, have met up and gone to the footy together. Um, we had a, a men's forum here in Frankston um, last year and a couple of the dads decided they would go to the forum and um, came back to the playgroup and said it was great and they really enjoyed it and they felt really, really pleased that they participated in this um, forum for dads. And, Oh, that was fantastic. Um, and uh, we also had a, a dad's play group running for a short term in Frankston and one of the dads was invited to the play group and um, uh, when this dad was talking to one of the other dads in the group, he was saying, oh, I'm going to this dad's play group and the other dad said, oh, I want to go along too. So he actually went along with this other dad to the dad's play group. So that was great for them to do that and it's great to um, know that they, they feel comfortable in a, had a good experience in one group and they feel comfortable then to move on to another group in the community. So that was um, a fantastic um, outcome. Um, also have some lessons that we've learned through the play group. Um, one is the importance of referral and engagement process. And I, I feel that you have to do that um, right for it to be successful. and we found that um, when um, perhaps there's been an agency that family's been working with or it might be a maternal child health nurse or it might be a support worker, uh, if, if that worker brings the family along to the playgroup for the first time and they have a really good um, welcoming to, that play, to the playgroup, they're more likely to come back again and return to the playgroup independently, which is really what we want to see. So um, what we call warm referral is when another worker will bring that family along to the playgroup. So that's been um, very successful. Um, we've also learned about the parents' learning styles. They all have different learning styles, but we've found what's been really powerful in the group is role modelling. Um, demonstrating something while the parents watching and allowing them to have a go as well is really great. Also impromptu education and learning when the parents engage. It's no point talking to the parent about a topic when they're really not, not wanting to listen. Um, an example, um, we were talking about um, 
safety topic one one week because the parents had talked about how their ch children are more mobile and getting into things. So we talked about you know keeping a safe environment, and we had a really great safety DVD which we thought was fantastic to put on. So we put that on for the group, and again uh, it was a bit like being in the schoolroom. They all the parents really disengaged very quickly and did not want to watch this video as a group. So we sort of learned that wasn't maybe a way to introduce some information and, and it was more powerful when we had the impromptu learning when the parent was engaged. Um, that worked best. Um, and also very important to revisit the topic to solidify information and sometimes you might need to go back and talk about that topic again and again and again and check in with the family too. Are they really understanding that conversation you had the week before and might be something to do with um, the child sleep routine, checking in how that's going, asking the parent to, in their words, you know, what their experience is and um, continue checking in but revisiting that, that topic just to make sure that they're understanding and um, you, you, sometimes you need to revisit it several times. Part of our um, Totally Awesome Parents group is that we have a network group of different professionals and I'll just, um, this information isn't up on the screen but I'll just go back and just chat a bit about the history of our network group. We actually had the Healthy Start presentation here um, at Frankston and we invited uh, various uh, local support agencies and, and let them know that Healthy Start are coming to present. Come along and, and see what it's all about and we had a great turnout. Mandy and I actually got up and we spoke to, um, to everyone after the presentation to say that we're really interested in starting up um, this particular play group but we were wondering if people would be interested in joining our network. Um, so we encouraged people to, to express their interest, um, which they did, and we had people from various disciplines and backgrounds, which was terrific. Um, we've got uh, you know, someone from uh, an organisation called Wallara, which works with young adults who are moder moderately um, intellectually disabled. and uh, she's been great. We've shared a lot of resources with her um, and we were actually meeting once a month when we first started this network group. Um, as the playgroup has been running for two years, we felt it wasn't necessary to, to meet so frequently. Everything was going along really well. Um, so now the group meets each term uh, and as you can see we've got different representatives from um, the various local support agencies in Frankston, so with Child First, Child Protection, Enhanced MCH um, and other early intervention services and support services. Healthy Start also uh, support our network group which is great. Um, and I guess this group is, really has been invaluable to the whole program. It's an opportunity for us to share different information, um, network, uh, People will talk about professional development or training that they've recently been to. We have reflective practice. There's some great discussions that take place um, with this network group and it's a bit of a think tank really. Um, it's also a great opportunity to um, get a better understanding of one another's roles. We're all very busy and we tend to, we try not to work in silos but sometimes we can't help that. Um, so it's really nice to understand different roles, find out information about different programs that are happening within the, the community. And we try and make the meeting at a time which is most suitable for people, which is very difficult. So we try and do perhaps like a breakfast meeting because that seems to work well where people can come for the very first part of the day. We have a little bit of breakfast, have our meeting and then they're off. Um, start their work day and that, that seems to work well. I think if you have scheduled them in a mid-morning or mid-afternoon it doesn't work as well because people are busy with appointments. So the mm -hmm. breakfast meetings have worked really well. 
And I guess with the network group, they've sort of passed information on to other people that they work with. It's really handy for referrals, um, an opportunity maybe to chat about, um, obviously confidentially, about some of the families attending. Um, so yeah, this has been really crucial, the network group. So, there we go. I would just like to acknowledge um, our funding partners. Funding partners. Thank you. Thank well, you. I suppose that's Oh, sorry, I talked over you there. Oh, that's okay. I was just wondering if, if anyone um, had any questions. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll have a look and get to that. I just want to say thank you so much first. Um, so if, uh, and before we, uh, I have one or two uh, questions uh, myself, so then we'll, we'll have a look also uh, in the meantime and what's come through. But, um, and uh, if anybody does have any other questions or comments they'd like to make, just jump into the questions part of the webinar interface. But thank you so much, Mandy, Georgina. That was wonderful and uh, great to hear the, the story around that group both from the perspective of how things began, but uh, and then what what went on over time in terms of learning and uh, unexpected learnings as well. The uh, the whole topic of getting uh, parents supported in this kind of setting is is really close to our hearts at Healthy Start. Um, and for those who want to get more connected with um, that kind of content and learn more in that space, you can also, as well as you know, recommending this webinar, which is being recorded and will be available through the site, as well as that, uh, the site uh, also has some other interesting resources. There's a piece up there in the practice points area around uh, father inclusive practice, which I think, coupled with your experience, guys, um, has some some good tips and, uh, and learnings around how that best occurs. It's it's an amazing outcome for you, you guys, in this to have that kind of father representation. It's an unusual outcomes so as you as you pointed out so uh, that's, there's another resource there that touches on that um, the school age children um, piece that we have on our site as well has some connection to what you guys are saying around uh, school experiences for those parents when they are younger uh, what what we find in the research is that parents of, of uh, sorry children of parents who have an intellectual disability and their experience at school is something that there is some evidence around uh, and it's it's uh, it's growing. It's not a, it's not a very strong field of research yet. But the school experience for those school aged children is is uh, quite interesting, and, and how it relates to the stigmatization of, of of their families. So that's something to check in on as well. Uh, and lastly, or another thing that I would link to this great presentation is the previous webinar uh, where we had our um, that topic on the social world of children cover it quite well as well. So that's something that people can jump onto and watch on the site, the previous webinar to this. Uh, I do have one or two questions and then I see a few have come through online, so we'll, we'll move fast. Um, before I do that, I'll also recommend one other thing and that is Raising Children Network has some great material uh, we've produced on that uh, through Parenting Research Centre on early illiteracy and what you guys were saying there around the interactive uh, time between parents and children uh, around books uh, ha with some nice videos and audiovisual material on Raising Children Network which touches on the same kind of messages. So if people are looking for more resources that they could use with parents uh, in practice, that Raising Children Network stuff on literacy I would say is a good one to check in on. But enough of, of those related resources. We'll circulate those again in, a, in a, an email afterwards, uh, you know, uh, updating people about this webinar and what else links to it. But enough about that. Thanks again so much for your, for your presentation, guys. It's really, really, really uh, rich and interesting. In terms of questions, I thought I would kick off with a quick one, and that is I'm really interested in the network group uh, just at the end there um, for, for you know, different reasons. I find that very interesting and in how it functions. Um, I, I love hearing quick tips like those breakfast meetings being, being more successful than other formats because the face-to-face, -face, of course, is really important for, for at least the early stages of getting a group sharing and referring and uh, exchanging knowledge and so on. I was wondering, are there any other quick things you would share with another practitioner who's on the line who's thinking, 
how would I get going with a similar kind of uh, network in my area? Look, I, I personally felt that the Healthy Start presentation was, was really crucial to the starting of the network group because a lot of these agencies that we invited to attend were already working with these families and pretty much had the same concerns as what we did. That you know, you could probably put something in place, early parenting program for a number of weeks, but it was it was short term and they also understood we need something long term. Um, and playgroups are traditionally successful in engaging families in other services. Um, so I think it was the healthy start presentation um, and the fact that we stood up and said, look, you know, we all work with these families, we need something that's ongoing and supportive, but we need your help. And we also made it very clear too that when we talk about we need your help, it's not we need you to help us write a report. It wasn't actually, um, you know, doing hard, difficult work. It's about getting together and sharing ideas. We always made sure that there was some nice food as well that tends to reel people in. That would be a golden rule. I think we're all learning over the years. <laughs> um, that's great. Thank you. And, and with the Healthy Start forums, I like that one. Um, we, of course, as a team here, are always happy and keen to help uh, those kind of events come together. Um, we do know that they can help galvanize and draw people together in a region. So if people want to investigate that kind of event, get back to us. Uh, I've got a wonderful question here from Catherine around the uh, child protection angle because of course we know that um, generally speaking the research tells us there's over representation of these parents in the child protection system and the question is have you guys uh, noticed or are you aware of any change in that or fewer referrals uh, at least in you know from your from your local knowledge uh, because of this kind of play group being set up Mm, our referrals come in from several agencies. Um, we uh, probably not so much from child protection, although the lo local child protection service does have a good awareness of um, our play group. But I suppose we're, we're looking at um, getting these families referred as early as possible. So quite often they might come in through maternal child health as all families do visit their maternal child health nurse uh, once the baby is born. But we do have other agencies that do refer. Um, our local child first agencies do, do quite a few referrals as well. And I suppose families who are linked in in um, some sort of support services probably do a little bit better, as in with child protection, I, I think. Unfortunately, a lot of families that do attend have some sort of child protection um, contact at some time. It's not ongoing. They might have been there might have been a notification done um, at the birth, um, you know, for several reasons. Yep, yeah. yeah, and and, um, and I guess on on the flip side of that, um, our related question really is uh, is it, it might be er too early to say, but have you noticed any change in the amount of um, re um, referrals to child protection, perhaps because of uh, parents having access to this kind of group uh, and, and support through it? You know, essentially reducing um, referrals to child protection. Is, is that anything you have noticed? Well, I suppose we really do do a preventative type of model as well. So yes, families that have been engaged and have continued to be connected, there certainly haven't been any um, notifications and they've actually done quite well. And some of these families, when they started, did have significant issues and um, have progressed through those issues. So yes, there mm. have been some really positive outcomes. However, I haven't got Okay, yeah, of course, it might be difficult to track such a thing, but thank you. Um, I've got one other question, it's sort of two parts to it, but it comes from Namira. And the question is relating to uh, parents coming in contact with the group. Um, on one hand, do you ever have a, a situation where a parent is reluctant to join in the group, uh, hoping or wanting to be part of a mainstream play group, and how you might you handle that? And, and, and another 
uh, part of this is have you uh, reached out to parents who are pregnant uh, and you know trying to connect with them early uh, around this group? I guess you know I'll talk to the playgroup question. Um, well, look, the the reason why we started the playgroup was, as Mandy mentioned, you know there was a, a lack of service there, and quite often um, in the enhanced role when it was time for that program to wind up, the, fa they, the um, practitioners would try to link a family into a uh, community play, like a local play group. These families would go along once or twice, nobody would talk to them and so they would drop back off and you know, before you knew it, they'd end up at the pointy end of the stick of child protection or whatnot. So it, it's interesting, a lot of um, a lot of families that have tried your mainstream playgroups um, haven't enjoyed the, haven't enjoyed the playgroup. Whereas we've had like verbal feedback that yes, we feel comfortable here, we feel safe here. On the flip side, though, um, we have had some uh, facilitated programs um, within our community where we've chatted to the families about, you know, why don't you give this a go? So as Mandy mentioned before, the short the short term dads play group, they went along to that. There was another um, another group based on um, interactions with your child that uh, I think pretty much all of our families attended and enjoyed and would go regularly. But they haven't actually turned around and said to us, we'd like to join you know, our local play group. However, we do make that information available to them. So, sorry if that was yeah, a bit so long winded. No, no, that makes sense. Uh, of course, parents will uh, at times decide they want to try one setting rather than another, but you're making the, the, aware, the availability of this one uh, known to them, you know, depending on what they experience in a mainstream setting, they know you're, you're there. I can see that. And on the pregnancy side, is that something you've considered, uh, an early engagement with parents that early? Yes, we, we certainly have um, talked about that um, quite a bit because we think uh, the earlier to engage with these families, um, the more success you'll have of putting in the appropriate supports that they need. Um, and, and part of our future planning was to um, have more links with local hospitals and social workers to um, have these families referred earlier. However, we do in our community at the moment have some programs that are running which engage um, these families uh, when they are pregnant and and see them through um, after the birth and probably for the first year or two. Of, their life, the child's life. So there are some other programs that are sort of fitting that need at the moment. But yeah, certainly we have looked into um, the engagement of families um, uh, antenatally because um, we think that would be really valuable for the families. So that's a message we're getting in, in other settings to um, clinic, which I'm sure people are aware of, and, and it's work in, in antenatal engagement and support. And it's, I think it's a real strong theme uh, moving forward for Healthy Start is, is it means so much to, to support early and early. Uh, with that, I think, we're done with questions. This webinar on uh, check-in, and by all means, uh, everybody can jump in there and keep talking on this topic. So, just remains to thank again for your time, your uh, pulling together of a great presentation, and your interest in delivering it to the network through, you know, this, you know, perhaps new type of environment. Uh, I know it's a little tricky for the first time, and, and um, I think you guys, guys did a great job. Thank you so much. Um, you. And otherwise, uh, for the participants, thank you for attending, and you will see popping up on your screen our short evaluation survey, uh, just for our records and how people felt uh, uh, today's webinar went. 
Um, thank you again, everyone. Thank you again, Mandy and Georgina, and we'll talk soon. Okay, thank you, Derek. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.